hello everyone yeah and a, and a very warm welcome uh, to our webinar on the topic of building in wood industry in Denmark. We all know that wooden house industry is a very strong industry with a long tradition in Estonia. Um, and it's also in its international competitiveness is confirmed by the fact that Estonia is number one exporter of wooden houses in the European Union. On the other hand, only 8% of all constructions in Denmark are in wood. However, Denmark is one of the most ambitious countries in the world when it comes to sustainability, and now also in the construction sector. In the spring just this year, uh, Denmark has adopted a new national strategy for sustainable construction. So the trend in construction in Denmark is changing. It's been changing for, for several years now, especially uh, the last two years a lot has happened. And just a quick look at the market clearly shows us that the demand for building uh, wooden building is rapidly increasing. Hence, the current, current atmosphere in Denmark provides extensive opportunities for Estonian exporters. And the goal of this webinar is to give an overview of the market, look at the current trends, and uncover opportunities for Estonian manufacturers in the wooden house sector. My name is Lucy Fellison, and I am the AIS export advisor responsible for the Danish market. I'm stationed in Copenhagen, Denmark, and I will be guiding you for the next for the next uh, an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Um, we have three uh, Danish market experts on the agenda today. Firstly, to introduce the topic of sustainability in the Danish construction sector, we will hear from Christina kran who is Development Manager for Sustainable Construction and Circular Economy at WeBuild Denmark. Her presentation will be followed by Peter Finholm uh, from Danish Technological Institute, where he uh, sits as Vice Director at Center for Wood and Biomaterials. Peter will talk about uh, the trend of wooden building in Denmark. And last but not least, we have Mickey Lund uh, from Building Network, who will give an overview of who are the major players uh, and major initiatives in the field. Uh, and also give you concrete tips on how to establish new and successful partnerships with Danish. So to this, end, uh, to this end, I would really encourage all of you to use this unique opportunity to ask questions to our fantastic speakers. There, uh, we'll organize it that way that there will be uh, some time allocated at the end of each presentation where uh, questions can be asked and will be answered. So please make sure to pose your questions to the respective speakers right away. Don't wait until the end of the webinar. Uh, and I'll keep an eye on the questions and ask them to the speakers. But to do so, uh, to post your questions, you can use two features of this Zoom platform, either um, the Q&A function or the check function, both is just fine. Uh, but before I give the word to our guest speakers, uh, I am very honored that the ambassador of Estonia to Denmark, uh, Dr. William Mart Lannemeyer, kindly agreed to join us here today and say a few welcoming words. So, uh, Mr. Ambassador, please, the screen is yours. Thank you, Lucy, <clears throat> for this uh introduction and uh, ladies and gentlemen i'm very happy to welcome you to this uh, webinar we have been well estonia and all people who want to um, present estonia have been working hard on establishing these kinds of uh, webinars because we think it is actually a useful tool for explaining and showing some possibilities that we have. Now, Estonia is a country where if you have visited, and I hope uh, you have, there are many different kinds of buildings. We have been traditionally since uh, a thousand years or whatever used different kinds of building materials. We have a building material industry that produces all kinds of different materials. We even have a traditional cement factory which has been working for over 100 years, and it goes back to some Danish engineers who were active in Estonia and were starting to uh, work on concrete uh, buildings and pipes and whatever. So we have a broad range of experience in all sorts of building uh, forms and building materials. And so why wood? And why are we so successful in wood? It's because it's one of the materials that we know very well because we have a lot of forests, you know, and a lot of tradition. 
And the main point is <clears throat> that wood is very flexible. It is the most flexible material for building. Now, um, I am an engineer by training, and once I, when I studied materials, you know, wood is the lightest, strongest material with which you can do anything. In other words, you could push on it, pull on it, you can stand on it, and in that sense, it's very flexible. Wood is also a um, sustainable um, building material in many ways, including the fact that it captures the CO2 or the carbon and the carbon stays inside for as long as you have the building. And uh, so it is a, an ideal material when it's also very good for energy efficiency. So this is why, while everybody can build using any kinds of materials to achieve different kinds of goals, it is actually wood that is probably the best material. And the question is, how do you use wood in different ways? And we have a number of almost 200 innovative companies who have been exporting and thinking of different ways to build with wood. And of course, we would like to share this information with others. And perhaps um, others will also have, find inspiration and ideas for their own projects. So I'm very happy once again to welcome you to this uh, webinar. I hope you find it interesting and that it will be a useful start or continuation for you in building with wood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your kind words and all your support. Uh, now we're excited to, to get into the agenda and hear from uh, our speakers. So Christina, please, you can start sharing your uh, screen. I just needed to unmute myself, sorry. <laughs> you can see my screen now, just to make sure. Okay, good. Um, I will, my name is Christina kahn Mürden, and thank you for the, for the invite for today. I'm really happy to be here and I'm excited also to talk about these, how we also work with sustainability in the, in the Danish uh, construction uh, sector. I am the head of development uh, in sustainability, in the, or sustainable construction and circular economy in the organization called We Build Denmark. It's a very new organization, uh, but it's it's also based on a long um, range of years of experience with um, with sustainable construction or construction industry in, in um, yeah uh, in general. But I'll just give a brief uh, introduction to where I'm from because that could also be some. Uh, possibilities to work together in the setup that I am in. Um, so I'll just briefly, um, I work in WeBuild Denmark and one of the reasons why we have this organization is the cluster um, is that we have quite a lot, it's a big industry also in Denmark. We have 250 billion corners turnover. I'm not sure how much that is in Estonian um, currency, but it's quite big in Denmark. We have employed uh, around 180 employees in the Danish um, construction sector, and we have 6% of the Danish export is also from the construction industry. Um, a bit about what we do, we have three overall focus areas where I am the head of development for one of them, which is the sustainability uh, or sustainable construction and circular economy. We also have focus on digitalization and optimization, and also on smart city and intelligent buildings. Um, so we, we also have, if that's also interesting in the later setting, that could also be interesting maybe to, to talk to you about. Um, there is a lot of possibilities also with working um, together with us uh, in WeBuild Denmark, but also some of the things that is the reason why this is also important is that 30% of Denmark's carbon footprint is related to buildings and 35% of all waste stems uh, stems from a uh, construction infrastructure sector. So it's quite big. There's a lot of potential to really do some a difference uh, when focusing on sustainability. Um, and also, as you also say, said much, uh, that wood is also a possibility to really increase um, the, the, the considerations about sustainability. Some of the things that we do in our organization is that we have knowledge uh, transfer, we have communication of knowledge, we have matchmaking, business development, 
And that is also some of the things that could maybe be interesting future on also to maybe talk more about if, if some of you are interested in also working with Danish companies. And I know that Miki later is also going to tell some of the stories of collaboration or cooperation between um, Estonian companies and Danish companies. But that is also some of the things that we would like to help with um, um, if that's of interest for you. But just to say what we, who we are, we are have around more than 300 members of the cluster. And it's also all sorts of companies. It's consultants and architects. It's uh, contractors, it's craftsmen, um, it's material manufacturers, it's technology manufacturers and suppliers. Uh, but also we have a close collaboration with uh, municipalities and other public and private builders. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities for, for working together. Um, yes, and of course, also for the knowledge uh, and education institutions. Back to the topic. Um, why do we even have sustainability or, or sustainability in the Danish construction sector? Why do we have that? Just some highlights. You probably already know uh, a lot of this, but just to say we have some of the things that also guide uh, why we work with sustainability in Denmark is the Paris Agreement. Um, but it's also UN sustainability or sustainable development goals or SDGs. It is becoming more and more a part of uh, the DNA of companies, but also of municipalities um, and other builders in Denmark that this is, um, this is important. Um, and then as also Lucy, you said that we had just adopted a new strategy for sustainable construction. Uh, and I'm going to go into a bit of more details with that. Not that I'm an ex expert in that, but I have some uh, practical knowledge also on how we, we work with it in, in Denmark. Um, and it's also closely linked to what we call in Danish, then Frivoli Bergdes class, which is a voluntary sustainability class, um, which is voluntary at the moment, uh, but it's going to be probably mandatory in a couple of years. Um, I'm going to just highlight a bit about that because that could also be interesting for you. Um, if you want into the Danish market um, with the focus on sustainability. You probably also know this, but some of this or the basis of the three dimension um, of sustainability is important for the strategy, uh, the national strategy. Um, and the link here is that it's, well, it's kind of the basis where you have both environmental quality, you have social quality and you have economic quality um, with the perspectives of for example, health and indoor climate in our buildings must be improved. And you can say also something like wood is also interesting in this context because it doesn't have as much um, uh, chemicals afterwards when it, depending on, of course, how it's handled, but it doesn't have as much chemicals in um, afterwards when it's installed as some other um, materials can have. Just, just, just a brief, there is five focus areas and there is 21 initiatives. And the five areas is um, focus areas is that there must be more climate friendly building and construction, just durable, high quality buildings, resource efficient construction, energy efficient and healthy buildings, and also a focus on digitalization. So it's digitally, digitally supported construction. I'm only going to go into some of them in the first three, uh, just to highlight the things that are, are most relevant uh, for, the, for the wood industry. Um, in the first area, I'm sorry for the heavy uh, line of text, I'm going to just break it down a bit, um, but there is eight in the first one, uh, and I'm going to into two of them, number one and number eight. Uh, and the first one is the regulation based on the voluntary sustainability class. Some of the things that are quite interesting here is to notice is that there is a bigger focus on life cycle assessment. We have had experiences for that during uh, some years now in Denmark, but it's going to be highlighted um, a more intensive uh, focus on life cycle assessment um, for, for the materials and for the building. And there's also going to be a focus, bigger focus on uh, total cost analysis, both for the construction, the operation and the maintenance, and also on resource use uh, on the construction side. That's just some of them. But the thing is that you could say that we have a focus on data and documentation in Denmark, but if you compare it, I don't know if you also have, maybe have uh, dealt with uh, Swedish and Norwegian um, settings or buildings, they have a longer tradition uh, for having uh, environmental product declarations, for example, and NCA data, um, but is also coming in Denmark much more now. Um, 
with this voluntary sustainability class. And the way it's worked or it's handled in Denmark at the moment is that uh, it's tested in various cases all over Denmark. So it, to get experiences on what works, what has to be altered a bit, uh, how is it to work with, is something has to be adjusted. Um, it is today voluntary, but in 2023, uh, it is expected to become mandatory in the Danish building regulation. Um, so you might already have experience with, uh, with data and documentation, but if you don't, then it could maybe be a good idea also to look into this, um, also for what if you want to be in the Danish market. Um, and some of the things that they're working on also is having this step-by-step uh, -step phasing in and tightening of CO2 requirements. Um, this can be quite interesting also in the future um, in general also have to have a focus on as a company. The second one, just uh, to show also, it's also linked to the CO2 reduction, um, where there's going to be an examination of the possibility of introducing CO2 reduction considerations in uh, the tenant requirements when a municipality, for example, um, sends out the requirements for a new building. Um, and right now, well, some of the things that are considered as going to be examined is energy efficient in the production of materials, or what we also call embedded energy, as well as in the construction phase. Um, there can be a lot of interesting things in this, but also that some of the, it must be documented in uh, product, uh, environmental product declarations. Um, it's quite interesting if we, for example, do some, there's an, a region, um, uh, municipality or region, region who's actually used uh, CO2 as a competition um, factor. So that they had to reduce, um, or the, the, the contractors uh, had to show that they had the, the least CO2 um, impact than their competitors. It was a, like a competition issue. Um, if we're going to have that in Denmark, we don't know that yet, but it could be also some of the things that could be followed up by this. Um, does it make sense, for example, to have CO2 as a, as a competition? Um, yeah. Yes. Um, the second one is the durable high quality buildings. And I'm just going to highlight uh, one of them. Um, and actually this, I don't know for the Danes, uh, but this actually looks something different. It doesn't look Danish as such, but it's actually close to Aarhus um, in Jutland, beautiful uh, wooden panel uh, buildings. And we're going to hopefully see more of this um, in the future. I just wanted to take this one in, number 10, which is safe and healthy recycling in construction. There is a huge focus in Denmark or a bigger and bigger focus in Denmark on circular economy and recycling of materials. Uh, but some of the things that are also in this as a challenge is the requirements for the documentation of the materials properties, as well as the problematic substances and the durability. Um, some of the things that we also see uh, is also the, the, the amount of it and also when it, is it ready at the time when you need it. So if you, I don't know how you work with that and how that would maybe apply for you in the Danish context, but still be maybe be, be thinking also when you maybe also when you when you offer in in the Danish market that it's also possible to maybe to disassemble the the materials afterwards uh, and be in a dialogue with the with the Danish um, um, customers uh, about that because it's um it's becoming bigger in Denmark and if it's possible for you to document it and show the qualities of it uh, then it would also be an advantage um, as, as I see it Yes, yeah, and, the, and the, some of the things that we also see that it can require new business models, new ways of working together, collaborating with other um, companies, uh, but also working together with maybe some of the, um, the builders um, on how to, to make this, ha <clears throat> make this happen, <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> also because some of the, for example, the public builders can see a challenge that if they have a deadline on a school, for example, or a kindergarten, and they want to use recycled materials in construction. And if then the materials are not ready at the time they need it, then the building uh, will finish later. And that's, that would never be an option they would prefer. So it could be good also to look into the kind of the security of, um, of these types of materials. And wood is definitely some of the things that I also talked about in this context um, in Denmark in general. Yes. Um, 
Then we also have number 11, uh, which is promotion of climate friendly building materials. And in this one, it's quite extensive in the description of it, it's also focused on wood. Um, and some of the things that's going to be examined and investigated is, is the thing also about um, with load bearing structures that they we want in Denmark also to have wooden structure construction in up to uh, five floors and I'm sure that the the two uh, presenters after me maybe will highlight it a bit more not sure but at, at least also say um, um, that this is also some of the things that could be interesting to to um, in, look into further in the Danish context um, yeah yes and then just uh, for the last focus areas I'm just going to look into it just a bit is um, the resource efficient construction. And I have only decided just, uh, just to chosen to take just one, uh, which is focused on modular construction. Um, there's going to be a clarification of possibilities for extension of special transport regarding enhancing modular construction. Uh, and some of the things that are linked to this is that for example, we have a long tradition in Denmark with uh, windmills and the Danish ways are, or the kind of, kind of low practical thing is how can you transport it um, from the production site of the modular constructions and to the um, production or to the construction site. Um, so it also has to be looked into that you can also support that, that if you want to transport modular construction is the road, for example, is it um, um, suitable for that? And, yeah, what's the possibilities? But there is a really long line of benefits of modular construction. And some of them is optimization of consumption building materials. I'm sure that a lot of you already know that, and I'm going to go into depth in this, um, but it is also a good opportunity for recycling and recycling during a disassembly. So having a modular construction could also gain a lot of um, benefits um, sustainability wise. And so that's also why we also want to look into that in a Danish concept, context. Um, yes. And then we have, yeah, I just mentioned that before with the barriers could be, for example, the transportation from production side to construction site. Um, and it could also be interesting in your setting that the possibilities of how would then it how would it be if you transport it from uh, from Estonia to to Denmark and how is uh, the yeah the transport from the for example the harbors yes and then the last slide that I have is uh, just briefly summing up some of the possibilities and challenges uh, and opportunities um, we have new strategies like the one that I presented today and it's going to be basis also for for future leg legislation. Um, for example, with uh, the voluntary um, sustainability class, that is also going to be a part of the, the, yeah, the requirements is going to be in Denmark. So if you are also ready with some of the, the requirements for documentation and data, for example, uh, with the NCA and environmental declarations, it's definitely um, a benefit. Um, and then also we have different certification um, uh, systems that we also use in Denmark. Um, I'm not sure if you have familiar with all of them, but there is some more, um, some maybe familiar in a in American and European setup that's called Lead and Briam. But in Denmark, we have what's called DPMB. It's based on a German um, certification, which is also highlighting the the need for um, for data, uh, for example. But it's also a really really good tool for the process in general that you have a good um, collaboration with the, the people involved um, in the building in the building and then just to as finished then sustainability sustainable circular productions and solutions can possibly provide new business models and partnerships and also new markets um, <clears throat> based on that and I can only uh, encourage for the partnerships uh, because partnerships between companies but also between um, um, public uh, builders or other types of builders, and also um, knowledge institutions. And um, yeah, whenever we, whatever we can also help with where I'm from, where I sit, um, let us know. And we can also have future uh, webinars on different topics or other topics where we can go into depth uh, with some of this. But I tried to make this um, fairly brief today. So I, that was um, all I just wanted to say today. Um, so is there any questions and please uh, ask.
Thank you, Christina. Um, thank you so much for, for all your input here. Um, so everyone who is joining us here today, if you have any questions, now is the time to ask Christina. Maybe some of our other speakers might have uh, questions to Christina to follow up on her presentation too. Um, if I should summarize what, 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 what you touch upon is basically that sustainability and circular economy are important issues in Denmark. There is a lot of focus on it. Some of it, some of the regulations are still voluntarily, mm -hmm. but that might change in the very near future, if not 2023, then shortly after that. Mm -hmm. um, and but I would just say, no matter if it's voluntarily or not, uh, having a focus on it as a supplier or a producer definitely could give a good competitive advantage, because it, it is being demanded by the customers in Denmark. So, uh, and in, in a much higher degree in the future will be. So, having a focus on it really pays off. Uh, that's how I <laughs> hear it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I let me check. I think there might be one question here. From uh, Indrek, mm. uh, he's asking if there is a timeline for adjusting the fire regulations up to five floors on combustible materials. That's a really good question. And I'm not an expert in that. Uh, maybe uh, Pila might know that better than I do. Um, so I'm not, I'm, or I could find out if, uh, but I'm not an expert in, mm -hmm. in fire regulations, sorry. <laughs> yeah, the fire regulations are, um, uh, being discussed a lot because we all know mm. they are quite harsh in Denmark, especially compared to other countries. Mm. Uh, but um, there's a lot happening in that area too. So we might ask Peter later on about this. Um, but uh, if anyone else has anything uh, or is interested in any, anything else uh, from this uh, field, uh, you can always uh, uh, get back to Christina or come to me and ask questions and we'll try to uh, find answers <laughs> for you. There is a, a Q&A. There, there is one, is there one more? Yes. What could be the future cooperation possibilities for Estonian companies uh, and rebuild Denmark? That's a really good question. Uh, and that's that my some... question and someone took it from me. <laughs> <laughs> <Marcus>. <laughs> um, there, there could... Uh, be, yeah, I think that is something we should explore. Uh, we have, as I said, we have 300 um, uh, members in our organization and we could, for example, match make with, uh, with you or and some of our members um, if there could be a possible cooperation. I know that, um, yeah, for example, there's a, a good case. And I think I saw it on, on Miki's slides uh, later with a Danish company and, and an Estonian company. So that could be some of the things that we could support with. Um, we link up with um, other companies, uh, but it could also be with uh, builders in Denmark. Um, so there could be a bit different um, possibilities for, um, yeah, the cooperation in rebuild Denmark. And feel free to write to me um, either uh, with the email that you or through Lucy. That's you're welcome to do that. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of um, information on your presentation, so you have kindly agreed to be yeah. to share your presentation with us later on, so it will be sent to everyone, so who is interested can really dig into all the legislation and new regulations on the way. Um, thank you so much, Christina. I will really look forward to do more cooperation with you um, yes, uh, between us or involving, hopefully actually involving the companies to, to help mm -hmm. them uh, yeah. create new partnerships that will would uh, be fruitful for, for, for both sides, for everyone, basically, and yes. for the climate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for now. Um, if you want to stay, you're very welcome. Maybe there'll be questions later, but uh, I would also understand if you have a busy schedule and need to leave. I'll, but... I'll stay. So if there's questions later, I'll give you. Great. Thank you for now. Uh, and now I would uh, kindly ask Peter Fünholm uh, to uh, come on the screen. Hello. Hi. Uh, and I just let you now go through your uh, presentation. Yes, I will share my screen. So, hopefully, you can see my presentation. Yes. 
Okay. Thank you also uh, from my side for the invitation uh, to speak today. Um, I, as uh, Lucia mentioned, the working at the DTI uh, has been here for more than 20 years. Uh, I'm a civil engineer uh, and wood technology <laughs> as, at focus for my uh, education back at 1999 from DTU. Uh, I have a lot of uh, activities within the area of using wood in construction. Uh, I, will, I will not go much into detail there, but uh, I have some years of practice in this. Okay, my agenda for, the, for this presentation is uh, kind of giving an overall perspective of wood in construction and also a Danish perspective. And then I will finally give into some of the activities that we are currently involved in at, at DTI. So um, maybe this is kind of basic knowledge uh, it for also for this audience uh, because, uh, well, we have all, I guess, an interest in using wood in construction. Um, and often, uh, you know, it's uh, the environmental uh, impacts that we are focusing on and that, had, that has been a dri uh, driver for many years uh, until now. Uh, but we also need to remember other uh, of these drivers within this area. Uh, uh, all the economic uh, sustainability issues related to this, they, they need to be highlighted even more uh, in order to, to especially have the construction clients see the benefits of, of going this way. Uh, and then uh, we also have the sustainability uh, issues uh, that, that, that kind of uh, plays a role in this. Uh, I put in a lot of bullet points here. I'm not, uh, I do not have time to go into all of them, right? then, then we will uh, need some time at the end, I guess, but but uh, I guess also you know them all. But uh, my point here is just that we need to remember to try to highlight many of these uh, things as well as we do with sustainability. So, um, wood in uh, buildings that uh, is to be seen in many different ways, uh, and um, yeah, often it is an architectural uh, element uh, in, in in these buildings. Uh, uh, what our focus at that uh, with our activities uh, lately have been is, is is having wood used as the structural element um, for for the yeah uh, construction uh, sector and especially also for multi-story buildings. Um, then it's uh, also I think important to stress that it's not uh, there's not a need to 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 be able to see the wood uh, in the in the buildings in in order to to the building to be a wooden building. But, uh, but often, uh, especially for new building, it's the, the architect has a very highly uh, wish of having a lot of uh, wood exposed. And um, that's often also gets some complications, especially I heard the question about fire before, but there's some, some things about fire and, and visible surfaces that, that is challenging. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, uh, when we're talking about buildings, it's, it's not, you know, steel buildings, wood building, concrete buildings, actually often it is a, a mixture of, of, of different materials in order to use them the best way. So, um, so this is actually, yeah, uh, we just need to make sure to use, use, use the building materials wisely. Uh, and um, yeah. So um, focusing on the wood as, as a structural component, it is still, uh, at least not in Denmark, uh, seen as a natural alternative to to the construction material that we use today. Uh, and it's also seen as, as lesser durable and with shorter surf life uh, compared to the alternative. So, so that's kind of a, some of the barriers that we need to address. Um, even though we have a long history of using wood worldwide, uh, many old buildings are still uh, standing out there with, with has a wooden structure and also a wooden uh, surface. Um, I think also Christina mentioned it, or no, it was Lucia mentioned it, that, 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 that the, the use of wood is different around Europe. And in, in Denmark, we say it's around 8%. I don't know if, if that figure is, no, the statistics behind it, but it's, it's somewhere like that. And it actually has been decreasing for some years. Uh, I think actually now I will say this, 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 this number is going up. Uh, the last four or five years, we have seen a, a huge change in, in the demand there. Uh, compared to other countries, uh, Austria have put some numbers in here. There has been a huge uh, increase in the last 20 years. And uh, yeah, market is also growing in Denmark. Here, I don't have any Danish numbers, but uh, in Sweden and Germany, uh, and I do not know the Estonian numbers, but the, 
the market share for, for one family house is quite large in Sweden and, and also yeah, higher in Germany than, than it is in Denmark at least. Um, going into the market of multi-story buildings, uh, Sweden have good statistics on this and they are around 10 to 15 percent in that in that area. Um, and uh, I guess they are leading the race uh, worldwide. Um, here are some numbers for, for different parts of Scandinavia, uh, where yeah, I've also put in the, the amount, uh, the share of, of, of forest in each country. And, and, and um, it is, as it is to be seen, uh, the forest area uh, of land is kind of having also an impact on, on the, the, the area you know, or the ratio of uh, uh, multi-story buildings in, in these countries. So what is uh, behind these things? Uh, of course, history plays a role. Um, we had uh, had some fires uh, two or three hundred years ago uh, that, that kind of had set the rules for our uh, current regulations around how to construct buildings. Uh, so we had, do not have a, a, a regulation scheme that is fully uh, adaptable for for wooden construction, um, and it's especially seen when we are building up in the height. Um, yeah, um, so uh, the two areas that uh, yeah, fire is of course one of them, but acoustic is also an, an issue to 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 address regarding this. Other barriers that we need to to look into uh, is the durability. It's our tradition, uh, as mentioned before, that experience uh, needed to be higher in order to be more sure that we choose and make the right uh, solutions when we are building with, uh, with a wooden structure. Uh, then there's regulation in a more general way, uh, with the biodiversity issue, do we have enough trees is also often mentioned uh, around this uh, economy uh, as the, the last thing which kind of is a very uh, high, highly used player in order to decide which way to go. But uh, why this does we, this matter? Of course, this is also, I guess, numbers you are familiar with. Uh, uh, yeah, the production of steel and cement alone uh, is about 50% of the global CO2 emissions, uh, and that's yeah, that's a lot. Uh, so, so there's a lot of issues that we need to look into. That are not only just substitute all with wood, but also for these other building materials, how to decrease these numbers here. Um, I think Christina, I'm not going that much into it, but Christina mentioned some of those uh, climate drivers. Uh, there's different overall climate drivers also in the Scandinavian countries here. Uh, that is kind of you know, same same timeline. Some of them some of them are more ambitious than others. Uh, Christina also mentioned some of the rules uh, nationally. I think actually in Denmark we are kind of a forerunner now in in setting some. Uh, some uh, numbers in in what to fulfill by 2023. So at, at least we are uh, have not been front runners of using wood in construction, but now I think we are setting some uh, limits there that can uh, yeah be be relevant also for introducing more wood into the construction sector. That uh, then we can also discuss always discuss the, the ambition level on on these requirements, but. But there are some numbers to relate to, at least. Uh, yes, then uh, I'll uh, try to give an, an, an overview on the current state of art, you can say, on, 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 on timber buildings. Uh, I'll not go much into detail for with these things, but, but just um, yeah, give some examples and uh, to see where, where we are. Uh, one of the projects that has been uh, very uh, well highlighted in, in many ways the last two or three years has been this uh, project in Lisbjerg Park, just uh, outside Aarhus, where, where there's a, it's a hybrid construction with uh, uh, beams, uh, columns, and uh, steel uh, and concrete. Um, and and uh, it's, it's, it's a, a three and four story uh, building. Uh, it's an aff affordable housing, so, uh, social housing project. So, so that there are some limitation to the economy on these projects. So, so it, this also shows that is, you know, we can build with using wood for, for also this where the budget is is uh, do not have uh, unlimited 
uh, amount of, 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 of uh, possibilities there. Um, um, this project has uh, been yeah, um, very well described many places. We are currently also doing some um, collection of, of experiences on this project to kind of evaluate things around it. So uh, I'll go a bit more into that later. Yeah, some more pictures. Um, one of the things here is to, is to, to mention that then, then the facade here is, is also a wood. It's not only the, the structure that is wood based, but, but, but the facades are uh, untreated spruce, uh, which kind of a, is, is, uh, yeah, um, uh, is a, a bit different from what is also seen in other places in, in Denmark, at least. Then another. Uh, uh, a building called Skademosen. Actually, this, uh, this is a project also for our construction client, Boligselskab i Sjælland, which has a concept called uh, Boligtræ uh, in, in the Danish. Um, so they have actually a concept focusing on using wood for, for their uh, affordable social housing. Um, and um, I think they have now four or five projects, and the Skademosen is, is, is one of them. Uh, where they are using here a lot of CLT uh, for these two and three story buildings. One of the, looking at the industry, uh, the prefabricated elements has been on the market for many years in, in, in Denmark and it is, yeah, one to six stories, that's the normal uh, uh, amount, the height we are, we are doing that. And that, that it's all over Denmark, this, these things, uh, these elements are to be used. Um, here's a, a, a project uh, where it has been as, as a, a facade, so it's actually a, a structure of concrete behind it, but the facade has been uh, of, of uh, a wooden prefab. Uh, yeah, also special uh, geometries. Uh, this is this, this, an old project, Bispia Babake, uh, but uh, very, very nice work. Um, also for uh, smaller buildings uh, prefab uh, is to be used uh, and and here's a hotel and uh, the west coast of, of, of Denmark uh, uh, also for prefab. This is a, a museum which also a bit special building so it's not a, a you know, many square meters of the same element type so that's that that, that is also uh, always the, the issue here how how to how unique uh, should, should things, things be in order to have this uh, uh, prefab uh, uh, benefits uh, put into the projects. Yeah, here another one like that. Um, then uh, I know the, the modular market in Estonia is very uh, uh, well uh, developed and uh, we also have modular housing used in Denmark, especially here is two to four stories. Um, uh, actually, I think this project was I cannot remember, but I think this was actually from the Baltic region. Some so, uh, uh, actors uh, on, on this uh, in this project somehow it's a hotel in Denmark. In, in, it's actually in five stories uh, with the uh, lower story in, in, in concrete. Other uh, examples uh, of, of of how to build with modular uh, buildings also in around Copenhagen area. This one. And this one as well, Elder Sailor. Um, yeah, so, so many of them are, are, are out there. Uh, then uh, uh, I would say during the last five years, there has been a, a, a very um, rapid development uh, on, on, on the interest of using wood, uh, and many projects are to be realized in the near future. Uh, also, some very large project. Um, I know Miki has some more insight. I, I, I was told, uh, so so he will come back to some of those mentioned here. Um, but I think that the the the, the two uh, or the, the ones mentioned here, something uh, some of them are already uh, started up, and some of them are still on the drawing uh, table. And uh, this is not all. There's actually more projects here. Um, what I've shown here, Østerbroke, that's a dorm to be um, put up. I think it will start this year, but I'm a bit unsure about what the, the timeline has been changed a couple of times. We have Violence Quartier, uh, the bottom on the right corner. It's a, a huge area, uh, 20 
a 2,000 apartment, so it's a huge area of, of Copenhagen that's going to be built. I'm also a bit unsure of the starting date there. Maybe Mickey has some updated on that as well. Uh, then we have uh, in, in Palombo, uh, the biomanufacturing project house, uh, it's uh, for education, it's, it's work started already ongoing. Uh, we have uh, Knud Riesreikerne in Aarhus, uh, which also is a kind of a, an add-on to the Lisbjerg Bagge we saw before. So here they are, uh, have some more apartments and the, the work is on going on the construction site. And then the, the last one I would like to mention here is the Lærkeskade. It's an office building for uh, Bygningsstyrelsen in, in Denmark and it's uh, yeah, uh, around 30,000 square meters of office building. So that's huge also, not in only in Danish uh, context, but also uh, international context. Um, con the, the, the team for, for that has just been uh, chosen a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, but I think Miki will go more into that later. Okay, then I uh, have uh, promised just to give some examples of, of the activities that we have uh, been uh, doing. Um, and uh, yeah, one of them, uh, which actually was very well, ti uh, well uh, timed with the development, actually, we, we made some uh, notes uh, five years ago around the state of art for multi-story buildings and also a, a, a memo on, on, on fire uh, in this area. And, and um, there was very uh, huge interest for, for the stakeholders out there to to follow this work. So we actually established a, a network for uh, wood and constructions uh, that time. Uh, it was founded at uh, in, in Inubyg, but actually, um, yeah, uh, Christina and we build Denmark uh, cluster is supporting the, that network uh, today. So uh, we have had more than 100 companies signed up in the Inubyg, and now we are hopefully have them all also joining into the we build uh, Denmark network. Um, actually, later today we will have a uh, an event uh, where we are focusing on Sweden. Actually, so we have. Uh, um, specialists from uh, Shilifto were talking about their experience of using wood, so uh, I'll be host for that later today. Um, we have some focus group focusing on te especially technical issues in order to uh, yeah, gather the sector uh, so that we can solve this issue together because um, it's not easy to do it individual uh, and start all over each time we, we would like to do something. We need to work together, so that has been the main uh, the main goal for this to, to kind of have this uh, collaboration uh, started up. Uh, we also have started this Nordic network for tall wood building. We did that in uh, 2018. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have any fun funding that right now. So now it's running a very low level. So um, we try to find how to, to continue this work. Um, but you're able to join the LinkedIn group uh, at least. Then another very uh, exciting uh, project we have just started is actually not a project, it's actually a commercial assignment from Real Dania. Uh, and here we are a technical uh, secretary and evalu evaluator to go into specific building constructions in Denmark that is ongoing and also has been finished to kind of uh, gather uh, experiences and also to identify which focus areas do we need to support in order to have a robust and, and safe future for use of wood in construction in Denmark. So that's a very exciting work, it's just started and yeah, we will hopefully be more clear on this uh, later this year on where we should uh, do more effort in order to, to move use more wooden construction in, in Denmark. Then uh, another very exciting thing is to that uh, we are creating a, a, a building wood community that is to be uh, yeah, actually an international community. So here we are focusing on the whole world, uh, never, uh, yeah. Not only Denmark or, or, or Nordic, but uh, a, a wider range, uh, and uh, that will be a, a, an online platform that could strengthen this global network and knowledge exchange. Uh, so hopefully, we can have also Estonian partners being part of this uh, community. Um, yeah, it will be launched uh, this year, but uh, and hopefully <laughs> sooner. Uh, then later, but um, I will I will say uh, beginning of the autumn, uh, some news will, will come on this um, uh, and maybe before. Even. So uh, last one is a small video. Uh, I hope there's sound for you. Elsewise, it will be you know, 
boring, but uh, that's about the uh, project building wood that we are currently coordinating. But uh, yeah, more on that in the video. Fighting climate change is one of our biggest challenges. The average temperature on Earth and the sea levels rise every year. Biodiversity suffers and the ecosystems are out of balance. To sustain our lifestyles, we emit tons of greenhouse gas emissions. If we want to save the planet, we need to reduce these emissions drastically. The construction sector, worldwide, is responsible for 35% of greenhouse gas emissions. Concrete, steel and glass are the prevailing materials used. To cut on emissions, we need to switch to renewable materials like timber. Trees grow naturally from sun and water. They are more than just climate neutral. Every cubic meter of wood binds a ton of CO2. In Europe, our forestry is sustainable and every tree harvested is replanted. When building with wood, we avoid the emissions from substituted materials and use our buildings and cities as carbon storage. The more trees we can plant and the more wood we can use, the better for the planet. We are Build in Wood, an EU project for sustainable construction. The project duration is four years and the consortium consists of 21 partners coming from 11 countries, all united behind one goal. Make timber the natural choice of material for the construction of multi-story buildings. To reach this goal, we're doing research for new components and better building systems. We work on life cycle sustainability assessment of timber buildings. We brought the international network for wood construction into being. We're collaborating with six sustainability-driven early adopter cities all over Europe. To facilitate the planning of timber projects, we create a design guide. Our efforts will help to create the sustainable future we need. A future built in wood. Yes, and that was actually it. So maybe some questions. Yes, thank you, Peter. So now uh, is the time to ask questions to our speaker here. So please uh, use some of the functions here. Uh, Peter, maybe I can um, start with a question that was posed previously and left uh, unanswered. I don't know if you, be, you would be able to comment on the fire regulations in Denmark because I think this is when international uh, constructors look at Denmark, they, they kind of hear, oh, the fire regulations are too tough and they get scared off, but it, maybe it's not so in real. So um, if you could somehow briefly <laughs> could touch up on this topic. Yeah, if you can say that, uh, uh, I'm not sure if this is the, the best answer, but uh, well, well, actually we do not have any rules, right? Uh, we, we have performance-based regulations, so um, you just need to show you have the performance and then you can deliver everything. But that's kind of the challenge that that uh, you know yeah you cannot carry the documentation in order to do that 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 is at least you need to be very strong on that um, but it's not impossible it's just to say to be clear on that uh, but we have these pre-accepted solutions that are kind of chilling okay if you do it this way then you are you know you are home safe and and, and we have a you know long tradition with these things um, problem is of course when we have uh, uh, things that we do not have long tradition with, then we cannot just put it into pre-accepted solutions. That 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 is that is clear. So that's kind of the yeah. We 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 actually have two systems there. That you can use the pre-accepted solution, or elsewise something else that you uh, find relevant to uh, to fulfill. And and I, I think the question was around the five story uh, or the twelve meter uh, limit uh, that will that will come. Uh, I, I I don't think it is is there now, but I think it, it, everything is set for. For having it in, so, uh, so but I have I do not have the timeline on that. I'm not a, a fire expert actually. So, uh, but uh, okay. yeah, but it, it is it's, it is to come. So it's 12 meters in the pre-accepted solution in in a short while. Okay, great. 
So, so when looking or listening to your presentation, it actually looks very optimistic. It looks like there are, are many projects that, that have been finalized, many projects on the planning board or in the pipeline, but it's still not enough, right? It's, it's, we still need to push a little bit more, uh, especially compared to other countries. Uh, the, um, the shares are very low in Denmark. So hopefully with all the initiatives you also mentioned there, uh, there will be more awareness about the possibilities and uh, Actually, if you ask me, or yeah, I have been asked uh, five years ago, I also asked four and three and two years ago, and how do you see this? Uh, and and actually five years ago, I would say, okay, no, not enough is not happening. We are, you know, we just got get going. And uh, well, now my wish come true because now things are going actually. So, <laughs> but 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 uh, so I actually think now we we need to uh, to be sure that we are doing it rightly, uh, oh. and that's also why uh, very excited with the. For us to be part of uh, doing the, you know, kind of to do some evaluation of, of of how do we do things, in order to do it right, because we have not long tradition with the things, so we also it's easy to do something wrong, and uh, one thing wrong will give impact to a lot uh, of things. So um, I think that's actually uh, at least our focus now to 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 be sure that we do it rightly, uh, not to get any. Uh, surprises, uh, bad surprises later on uh, that will impact the whole sector again. Um, so that's, um, yeah, I, I, and, but of course, every more can happen. I would say that five years ago, we started our network activities. No construction client was eager to follow those. Now <laughs> we have the construction clients at awareness. Uh, and and, and uh, so, so that's, you know, they're the ones to, to, to put the money into it. So, yeah. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. And so they are grounds to be optimistic. That, that's very good. <laughs> it's good to have it confirmed by the expert. Um, and maybe just, uh, I'll repeat the, also the second question that was asked to Christina. Uh, where could you see some future cooperation possibilities for Estonian companies uh, in, in Denmark? Yeah, I think actually we had had some uh, related to the Nordic network. We had some collaboration doing study trip to Shira Wexia. I think it was uh, so. I think that that is some very good example of doing something together in the exchange of both knowledge, but also experiences and in, in, in different areas. So, uh, so I think that's very, at least. Uh, that comes something also surprisingly <laughs> out of these things sometimes. Um, yeah. uh, we have this community that we are starting at the Building Wood community. I would really, very much like, you know, that's for all, that's an open access for all uh, um, initiatives, projects out there to be part of that. So we can have one place to gather our, our knowledge. Uh, there's a, uh, often things are seen at, that at we do our own thing and then we do a ma many parallel lanes there. We need to work together. Uh, that there's enough cake for all of us, I guess, when 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 we do it the right way. Definitely. So communication and information, knowledge exchange, uh, study trips sounds like a good idea as well. Uh, bringing stakeholders to each other sides and showing them what can be done, what's being done, and having discussions about the possibilities. Perfect. And what, I actually do have one more. I don't think there are questions from the audience here, but. Um, I have one more, more specific question. Also in your presentation, you talked a lot about prefabricated elements and, and modules. Uh, what I see in Denmark that yes, there is uh, a lot being done in, in elements, uh, prefab elements, uh, 2D. When it comes to modules, there are examples, but it's not uh, so much where is the barrier or, or why do we not see more of these modular buildings in Denmark? Hmm. I actually don't think we have the statistic because I actually think there's a lot of modular buildings in Denmark. Uh, a lot of social, the big social housing uh, construction clients, they have uh, last 10 years done very a lot of modular buildings actually. So, but I, I don't have the number. So I'm not, I don't, I, but I, I think if, if we kind of look at the market share for modular buildings in Denmark, uh, uh, it will be higher than we think it is, but, but we need to, I don't have the numbers. I would like they to have there. the numbers. <laughs> they are there. They're just hidden and we need to find them out and uh, <laughs> be better yeah. at catching the opportunities there. Yeah. yeah. Fantastic. Peter, thank you so much for all your input today. It was very relevant. Will, could we also use your presentation afterwards? Will you be able to send us the slides for sharing? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye. rest of the day. Yeah, you too. Bye.
Uh, and now I will ask Mickey to uh, come on the screen uh, and share his uh, presentation with us. Hello, Mickey. Hello, Lucy. Can you hear me? Yes, you're on. Thank you. And the presentation, is it on too? Yes, yes. Oh. Thank you very much for the invitation. Hello, everyone. My name is Mickey Lund. I'm the Managing Director of the Building Network. We help uh, international clients when they're trying to enter the Danish and the Scandinavian market. And Lucy has invited me here today uh, to uh, uh, uncover some of the opportunities in Denmark, uh, uh, explain a little bit about the stakeholders and emphasize how you as an Estonian uh, company can expand your business uh, in Denmark. Uh, I, I brought along uh, a couple of, of pipeline projects. A uh, few of them are similar to the ones that Peter shown. So a few of them are, are different. I'll go in a little more details in terms of what the projects are about and also uh, a, a little about the, some of the stakeholders uh, if they have been uh, announced. Uh, the first project, uh, quite an interesting uh, project. It's uh, one of the biggest uh, timber developments in Denmark. It's uh, located in, uh, in Orleans, the second largest city, so the third largest city, sorry. Uh, it's the Danish Building and Property Agency that will uh, make uh, workstations for uh, 1,600 governmental uh, employees. Uh, they use uh, timber as load bearing structures uh, for about 30 1,000 square meters. Um, NCC is the contractor, awarded contractor together with the CF Müller Architects and more as the engineer on this uh, project. And the reason why this is uh, quite a, a unique project to talk about is that it's uh, kind of a leading example where the uh, public organizations uh, uh, try to uh, help move the industry in a more wooden direction uh, and save considerable amounts of uh, CO2. Construction materials are directly responsible for a substantial amount of building total CO2 emissions, thus an increased focus on the use of timber in construction projects is important to construction to the green transition of the industry as a whole. But it is not just uh, public, um, uh, what do you call it, public organizations. Just a second, I'm having problems shifting my... Uh, my, uh, there it goes to the next one. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, it's not just the public uh, entities that are uh, looking at sustainable construction. It's also the the private, and some of the drivers in the private sector are uh, ideally the pension fund. Uh, this, is pension. A, this is an example of the one pension fund. So it's that there will be private offices in uh, in, in Copenhagen. It was only just, uh, last week, so the stakeholders have yet been announced uh, as soon as they, they are. Next one is uh, uh, on the uh, fantastic island of uh, Bonholm, is a, is a small hotel uh, called Green uh, Solution Hotel. Uh, they have a uh, a very uh, sustainable uh, approach towards everything in the in the hotel and when they were uh, going to extend uh, with their new wing obviously they were looking at uh, uh, wooden uh, wood as uh, one of their drivers one of the main stakeholders in the project was uh, 3xn uh, another danish architect uh, they do a lot of uh, wooden projects not just in denmark but also in uh, canada uh, they have their own uh, think tank, or green think tank, where they come up with uh, new innovative ideas, both on, on circularity, but also on uh, sustainability. So this is definitely also a, a stakeholder worth uh, following. Another interesting part, uh, I think it was Peter who mentioned, or Christina mentioning that uh, uh, a lot of the municipalities uh, are uh, a driver also on sustainability. They're looking at the CO2 uh, emissions. And here we have a, a, a municipality of uh, Vibo who has tendered out a, a school with a load bearing construction, but also facade elements in, uh, in, uh, in, in wood. Um, Agitima architect, uh, Slot Muller, 
and uh, Eric Architects uh, uh, have been involved in the in the project as uh, stakeholders. And the current state of this project is it's been tendered out not as a turnkey project as the other one we saw uh, for the Danish uh, Building and Property Agency, but uh, this time they have been uh, tendered out in Fawanta Pisa like uh, small packages. Uh, for I think uh, 15 uh, different uh, specialist contractors. Uh, these type of uh, opportunities often bring in uh, local expertise uh, where we see uh, or specialist com uh, co competences, uh, collaboration with uh, international clients. Uh, so this is definitely also a, a project uh, worth following. I think uh, the the winners are, will be awarded uh, just before the, the the summer on this project. Peter mentioned briefly uh, this really interesting uh, project. Uh, it's uh, this uh, violence criteria, also known as uh, made for Philippe. Uh, it's Copenhagen's first all timbered neighborhood. Uh, master plan is designed by Henning Larsen, architect, who's also an interesting uh, stakeholder. Uh, the clients behind it is uh, the Pension Denmark and Björn Havn, another pension fund uh, with a large focus on sustainability. Uh, building network, uh, other than helping uh, international clients, we also have a, a network where we facilitate conferences and over the last year or two, uh, we've not only seen uh, the pension fund being drivers in, in the sustainable uh, projects, but now uh, also a lot of the private uh, companies are looking in, uh, in, in this direction. The interesting about this project is it's actually forming a, a transforming a, a former dumping ground site into a, a model for sustainable uh, living, accommodating up to 7,000 residents in a tire uh, timber construction. Uh, the last project uh, that I'll uh, uh, mention to you before I start going into the opportunities uh, is a, a private landowner. It's actually a Julesberg estate. It's a, a, a really large area in, uh, in, in Nuborg, uh, in between uh, the mainland of Greater Copenhagen and uh, the, um, or, or the island of Greater Copenhagen and uh, the mainland of Jutland, uh, north of um, uh, uh, Germany. We have this island where H.C. Anderson was born and in, in Newport, this really large development, uh, all the uh, timber neighborhood is also being planned. Uh, it was uh, announced uh, a, a couple of years ago, the intentions uh, that was all wood, but with mixed use. Uh, so a lot of different uh, types of both uh, modular buildings, uh, uh, whole uh, what do you call it, uh, tall structures, uh, medium sized buildings, uh, townhouses and so on. But uh, there hasn't been uh, many updates on this project lately and we've been really trying to follow this uh, exciting uh, project. Uh, and uh, I think it was also uh, Christina who mentioned something about uh, looking into uh, new tendering models uh, where CO2 reduction could be a uh, criteria or uh, awarding criteria. Uh, quite interestingly, uh, the municipality of Copenhagen has recently announced that they would uh, have a a demand of, of, of wood used in construction of the extension of one of their schools. So this is uh, quite new that the largest uh, the, the largest uh, capital or the largest city in, in Denmark is actually looking into this uh, wooden uh, directions also. When Lucy first contacted me, she asked me, Miki, could you share some of the ideas and some of your experience for helping other international clients when they enter the Danish market? How uh, do Estonian companies uh, expand their business? Uh, what can they, uh, what can, uh, what can you share with them so they don't have to do uh, the same mistakes as uh, most other international clients when they when they try to find either partners, opportunities, uh, or uh, making. Uh, 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 
approach to introduction, uh, introducing themselves to uh, potential opportunities. And uh, I made this uh, slide to try to assist you. Uh, first, I would uh, uh, ask you to do a little bit of uh, engagement, uh, all of you. Uh, I would ask if any of you are using LinkedIn to support your sales. If you do, uh, please use the chat and, and say yes. Uh, we're just making a, a short uh, poll to see if uh, any of you uh, are aware. Uh, not all of my international clients, when they enter uh, the Danish market, uh, use LinkedIn. And uh, I see this as a, as a great advantage when connecting and, and, and following uh, companies in Denmark, but also engaging in dialogue. Uh, um, so. If you could just uh, spend uh, one minute just going to your chat and just say yes or no. If you are not uh, using LinkedIn or have a, a personal profile, uh, please uh, answer no. If you do have one, answer yes. And uh, we can have a, a good feel of uh, uh, how many uh, Estonian companies are used to using their, their LinkedIn in the sales. I have a, a couple of answers, uh, still got a few ticking in. Uh, about half of the participants have answered so far. I'll just give you another 10 seconds uh, to get in the get in the chat. Thanks a lot. Uh, Last time uh, I gave a speech to a group of uh, Estonian companies. Uh, we did a small uh, survey among the group of participants uh, where they explained that uh, uh, their biggest challenge when introducing themselves to the Danish market or the other Scandinavian markets was that they were getting so few answers. Uh, many of the participants were using uh, email as a uh, email as a, a, a tool and they were writing in uh, in English and uh, two to five percent uh, answers were, were were given. I would like to share you a, a model which many of our other international clients have had success using uh, when approaching Danish people. Uh, Danish people like to share knowledge. Uh, they are not really fond of being contacted uh, by uh, uh, sales uh, related uh, approaches. So if you uh, use this, um, I would call it uh, approach, uh, your, uh, your dialogue will uh, increase dramatically. Um, what we found, what we've learned is that it's relevant approaches uh, are much more likely to be uh, answered and using LinkedIn uh, by first following the company will uh, allow you to get a lot of vital information on the type of projects and the uh, stakeholders within each company that are working on the projects. So uh, the second part of after following the projects or the company on LinkedIn, you will get in your personal feed a lot of information when they publish that they won projects or they are entering into partnership with other stakeholders in order to be pre-qualified for, for new and upcoming uh, opportunities and tenders. Uh, when you've identified the relevant stakeholders, uh, it is important for you to reach out and connect with them. Uh, always use uh, the additional text in LinkedIn. There's an opportunity to write a small personal note. Don't just try to hit the connect button, which seems a lot easier, but actually give a personal uh, greeting uh, to each of your approaches. And then the next thing, which most of the clients, when they try to enter the ma uh, market, actually find uh, quite difficult. This part once uh, 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 a potential partner has uh, accepted to connect with you, they are very likely to actually explain a lot of information about what they do and what they can deliver. Uh, you should actually turn everything uh, around and actually show a lot more interest in this company and getting to know it better. Remember, people buy from people they know and trust. And uh, this is important to get to know the person before you can actually start selling to them. So what we recommend is that you ask a Danish person for permission to ask a couple of questions initially on LinkedIn, 
most people, uh, 70 to 80 percent, would actually accept uh, that you ask questions because normally they have a competence within the field. And if you're asking questions uh, w relating to a project or relating to their company, uh, they see this as an opportunity for partnership and not uh, uh, trying to actually purchase something of you. Uh, second, uh, second, uh, what you call a step in the dialogue or face uh, could be uh, to ask for their help. Uh, Danish people are also very happy to help you. But again, if they feel that it's uh, too uh, much of a, a sales approach, uh, they would end the conversation. So the best thing you could do to initiate a dialogue is actually to ask for their help, uh, maybe introduce them to a relevant co colleague uh, once you have stated uh, your interest uh, in, in your company. Um, so when you engage, in the dialogue with the intent to learn more and not to sell, uh, you will have a lot more uh, success. Most of the Estonian companies that we've worked with so far uh, either approach Denmark with an intent to become a, a subcontractor or find an ideal distributor, partner or agent. Uh, this uh, approach uh, can be used in, in, in both terms uh, for, for, uh, for finding either a partner or a, a client. Uh, so uh, the, the best thing for you to uh, do in, in this sense is actually to uh, start uh, testing the approach. And uh, this will, you will see that uh, this also works for you. The advantage with the Danish market is that many of the, especially the architects working with uh, wood also works uh, internationally. So uh, increasing your awareness or your interest in Denmark could also mean working in uh, other markets. Uh, take for instance, this uh, Timber Hybrid, uh, CF Müller Architects is involved in this in, uh, in, in, in Munich. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, uh, recently announced that uh, uh, many of the Danish architects uh, with their wooden experience, not just in Denmark, but also in Sweden and Norway, gives them the uh, opportunities uh, in uh, Germany, Austria, Canada, Switzerland, and, and so on. So another example is uh, Lord Amendop Architects, who has just been uh, pre-qualified for a uh, mixed-use uh, project in uh, Gothenburg. A couple of weeks ago, I read a, an interesting story about one of the leading uh, modular uh, house building uh, companies, Skandibyg. Uh, Skandibyg is owned by the second largest Danish contractor, MT Hoiko. Uh, in the article, it was mentioned that uh, the, uh, it was a, a, a three-way collaboration between Estonian, Danish and uh, Germany. Uh, from what I could find out in the article that the Estonian German company, uh, it's a mixed uh, company, uh, was uh, offering uh, Skandibyg the opportunity uh, to uh, work with uh, their new uh, modular building that could be used both in uh, uh, as a, a summer house or in a, a temporary living quarters uh, and actually uh, with uh, this interesting design. I think uh, from what I've seen with the uh, prefabricated and modular buildings from Estonia have a very high level of uh, construction and working uh, cross-border either with uh, a Danish architect or Danish uh, modular builder could be a large advantage to adapt uh, uh, what do you call it, your local knowledge of production with uh, the design that is, uh, has a, what do you call it, a, a good feel in, the, in Denmark. Mm -hmm. Some of the questions uh, we often get has a, a legal and a financial uh, matter. We uh, often get questions such as, uh, how do we make sure that we are compliant with all the rules and, and legislation while we're here? Uh, we know about the, 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 the harsh Danish unions. You have to meet certain minimum requirements in terms of, uh, of salary. Uh, there is a specific uh, building codes that we have to comply with. 
these kind of questions, uh, we have a, a team of uh, advisors that can uh, assist you uh, on, on uh, these matters. So we have a network, it's not uh, our own employees, but we have a large network. So if you have uh, questions in terms of this, uh, feel free to connect with us and we will connect you with our large network of uh, advisors. Um, uh, one interesting uh, connection that I would like you to have a little bit more look at is that the Kobe uh, is uh, the second largest Danish engineering company in Denmark, recently purchased one of the largest architects and now doing integrated services. Uh, they, recently, uh, they recently developed a, a new wooden team that would work both across uh, architects and engineers in terms of having a more integrated approach towards the new wooden uh, project uh, clients. And uh, I've uh, in this sheet, I've just added a, a small link for uh, their video, but there's also the two uh, head of department uh, stakeholders, one from Kobe and one from Agitima, if you follow that the link in the slide. I will share the slides afterwards so you can have uh, links to both uh, all the projects and all the, the articles that uh, I have mentioned in this uh, presentation. Another question we often get from our international clients is uh, how do we get more information? How can we follow what's going on in the, the Danish market? Uh, I have uh, two interesting uh, wooden newsletters uh, that I uh, can recommend you to uh, follow. Uh, I know that uh, uh, Peter also had a, a couple of, of, of interesting networks, especially the, the total buildings network in Scandinavia that could be very relevant. But the uh, wood supply is definitely an, uh, an interesting uh, channel to use. It's commercial channels from one of the leading Danish uh, uh, construction uh, papers. It's a sub site that has a focus on, on wood. Uh, there's both opportunities for you to advertise and uh, write editorials on the site, but there's also uh, information available whenever something, uh, a new wooden project is. Uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, as a press release, uh, they often uh, write articles about it. So if you sign up for these two free newsletters, you will get a lot of interesting information about the upcoming uh, pipeline of projects in Denmark. If you uh, need help in uh, actually getting a, an interesting case story uh, shared in, in some of these channels, we uh, are welcome to help you in uh, translating uh, this into uh, Danish and, and making it uh, finding the right channels for you to expose your, uh, your uh, competences and products. Last year, a new annual magazine uh, was uh, for wooden uh, players was uh, established and uh, in the first edition of this uh, these uh, 17 uh, companies were all uh, giving uh, articles and insights into the wooden construction uh, i believe that uh, especially supreme who was also pre-qualified for uh, one of the early projects that i mentioned with the big office uh, bm Bygge industry is uh, one of the uh, like Scandibuk, one of the leading modular builders, who also could also be relevant for you. Asabella Knusen is a one of the largest uh, contractors with uh, carpenter expertise. Uh, Rambul is the leading engineering uh, company. Uh, in Glasen, we have all already discussed, uh, but there are more. Uh, the, um, this magazine is called Woodworks. It's an annual Danish magazine. It came out uh, for the first time uh, last year in September and would be a good broad channel for you to expose your products and services uh, and, and uh, maybe create an advertorial if you have any um, uh, references in Denmark or in Scandinavia that you can could share in this magazine this would be a, 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 an interesting way of, of exposing your, your company. But we all also have a, a, an annual event, uh, a Danish uh, conference with focus on uh, wood 
it's called Building Wood. Uh, the last one was held in, uh, in May, so it won't be until the next uh, spring that we will have uh, the next conference. Normally two to 300 stakeholders take part in this event. There are exhibition opportunities. Uh, the companies uh, have uh, two full days of uh, networking. There are a lot of keynotes with, where you can meet the leading uh, stakeholders in the country. So if you are only to take part in, 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 in one uh, wooden event and have one marketing activity in uh, Denmark, this could be uh, an, an, the, the most important one for you to attend. I know that Lucy has attended the last uh, couple of years. Uh, we were there uh, two years ago, uh, both of us. And I know that she took part in the, the, the recent event, which was also a hybrid uh, where it was uh, possible to participate uh, virtually. Finally, uh, if you're finding it difficult to be introduced to clients and, and partners, uh, we have uh, an uh, opportunity for you to uh, network uh, with us. If you'd like to know more about how to expand your business in Denmark or the rest of Scandinavia, feel free to book a short networking session. We would love to hear about your innovative products and your services. Uh, this uh, service or the networking session is, is free of charge. You're welcome to use the link and book uh, an available time in, directly in my calendar. You will be sent a, a calendar invite with a virtual meeting and uh, you could state uh, what you're trying to achieve in Denmark and we're happy to share our uh, thoughts and uh, individual uh, ideas for you. So thank you very much, Lucy. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you, Mickey. And, and a, a warm recommendation uh, from my side to use this uh, generous offer from Mickey to book a session with him where he can, uh, you know, tailor his input towards uh, your individual needs and, and, and wishes, wishes in terms of uh, the Danish market. So thank you for this offer, Mickey. I hope many of you will take up on it. Uh, very interesting presentation. Now is the time to ask questions. I don't see any questions, so um, we'll give it a little bit more time. There is one coming in. <clears throat> there is also, and, and uh, Christina's saying that, oh, it's maybe just a comment more, <laughs> mm -hmm. that at the beginning of September, there's also a new conference on bio-based building materials. That's mm -hmm. true. Uh, it's another series of conference by the Building Green Network. So um, anyone working with bio-based uh, building materials or re re related, this could be also a good option. Um, maybe Miki, uh, what, what would you, what, what is your view of, um, I agree with you that LinkedIn is definitely a tool that needs to be used on the Danish market and it's a tool that works. I can confirm that. <laughs> Uh, I'm glad you spent some time on it. Uh, and then you also mentioned a few conferences where we really, all of us hope that uh, the pandemic will be behind us and it will be possible to have these physical conferences and meet in person. What, uh, you know, your, your view of how, what, what's more important, how to combine it ideally, both the uh, uh, virtual or electronic uh, connection and then the physical networking. Is that important for the companies to come here and meet? It is definitely important for them to come and meet in person. You only get so far on the virtual part, but you can actually do a lot of research and you can get the initial interest uh, in the virtual meeting, uh, especially if you have someone locally like yourself or others that can help you doing the matchmaking. It's often difficult to find the right stakeholders uh, for you to approach. Uh, I think we have many tools now. We have Google Translate. Uh, if you read an article from one of these uh, newsletters that I've sent to you, it's quite easy for you to follow. You look at the pictures and if they're relevant. Uh, but if you're using LinkedIn, you already have the translate tool there. Uh, there there's a translate button. You look at a feed uh, from a potential client or partner and you can just click the translate button straight away. So this is why I really advise you to uh, connect with your potential partners uh, on uh, LinkedIn because you will get uh, a personalized uh, newsletter in, in your feed if, if you follow the, 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 the channels. But uh, I, I know in Denmark, uh, we are very happy with meeting in, in person and we have started. We are not so worried uh, anymore about the COVID, 
the last couple of months, I have had several physical meetings again. Uh, uh, things seem to be opening up. And I know just after the summer break, uh, everything won't be back to normal, but it will be back to a new normal. And uh, uh, maybe making this initial virtual meeting as your first step after the LinkedIn approach, and then try to see if you can have a physical meeting. You get a lot further in physical meetings in Denmark. And this is just my uh, yeah, advice. Mm -hmm. How, um, I'll ask a little bit tricky, what, how would you say is the image of Estonian companies and, and the Estonian wood uh, building sector in Denmark? Is there an image? Uh, I, I think I know a little bit more about these Estonian suppliers than, 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 than the average, but they have a, uh, often they put Estonian in, and I have a tendency of doing it myself, a bit like when uh, you have a Southern European uh, uh, country coming to Denmark, they say it's Scandinavia, and we have a tendency in Scandinavia of saying the Baltics uh, and not uh, each of the, the countries, uh, but we define uh, wooden specialist from that area uh, and it has a very good image on on being uh, both innovative uh, and uh, having uh, competences uh, the hard part is actually uh, getting that uh, what do you call it cross country uh, collaboration going uh, there's not a, a lot of uh, companies that are in in denmark and has in the past i know estonians have uh, do, uh, done a lot more collaboration is it with Finland and Sweden in the past and a lot more tradition with doing uh, collaboration here but uh, Denmark should be uh, uh, we are used to making trade in all directions so we are used to trading with Germany UK to the to the west uh, and also a lot of uh, Polish and Baltic companies on on the eastern side uh, so I think it, it should be very easy I wouldn't call it easy a lot more open for the first uh, introduction to Denmark, because we're used to working in collaboration with international companies, uh, is definitely what we feel compared to the other Scandinavian markets. Uh, but we don't have a big tradition, and this is probably the biggest difficulty. Does that so make sense? How important, yeah, how important would it be if we could a little bit follow up on this as well? How important it would be to have some kind of middleman on the ground, a, a, a Dane? working for the company or is it possible to go directly to to construction clients or other partners in Denmark it, it's definitely possible to go directly to the construction clients but it is a difficult uh, uh, f because to get their attention and to get their time <laughs> and if you're not here in person if you're just trying to reach out on on uh, on an email or something like that you would feel like you're hitting a wall mm -hmm. and, uh, this is what we often have it, it's definitely advantage having a uh, a person on the ground uh, in, in Denmark, a, a local speaking person would uh, definitely make it easier. Uh, the, the, but it's, it's sometimes a big investment for Estonian companies because of the, 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 the pay, uh, the salary in, in Denmark. So, so being able to afford a, a full-time person in, in, in Denmark without having a big market already is, is almost impossible. So uh, one, one idea could be to uh, either uh, most most Estonian companies, when they approach me, ask if it's possible to find a distributor or an agent that can work maybe with some sort of a subsidy or on a small, I would call it maybe a, a couple of hours per month kind of a, a, a consultancy fee. Uh, this, these are definitely options. Uh, mm -hmm. This is both something that we can do, but we can also help you find uh, a specialist uh, within certain areas that can, uh, can assist uh, the Estonian companies. Yes, yes, okay. Otherwise, I would, I would always um, advise Estonian companies to do their homework, get to know the market, uh, and then be, a lot of, be patient be, and persistent when, when trying to approach uh, possible partners uh, and then creating the partnership. And now, also, when it's going to be possible, be present and, 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 and meet and mingle. As you said, I've been at the Building World Conference uh, in the middle of May. And that I can just confirm it is the place to be. You meet very relevant contacts, high quality contacts who are interested in the building wood area and are looking for new partnerships and new cooperation op opportunities. So, it seems, uh, so, sorry for interrupting, Lucy. It mm -hmm. seems like when the Danes have decided to go to a conference, 
then they are more open than when you contact them either by phone when they're uh, uh, worried about something else or by email when they have a thousand other things to do. But once they have given it uh, focus to, to, to be at a conference, they are not more open and a lot more e a lot easier to approach. So I definitely uh, recommend that too. So I really look forward to seeing everyone here in Denmark. <laughs> yeah, next time in May. Uh -huh. <laughs> Miki, I just to make sure we answer there, there is one more question that came in, a uh, very specific one uh, in terms of what is it Siberian large wood products? Uh, are Siberian large wood products popular in Denmark? I, I'm, I'm not uh, able to answer, to be honest. Uh, maybe P Peter, if he's still here, or Christina can 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 help me on that part. But uh, I'm 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 not a specialist on on the different types of of wood. That's that's completely fine. We'll get back to uh, back to this uh, on the email. Very well. I don't see any questions. I think it's because um, this an hour and a half has been very intense. There's been an enormous wealth of information, uh, material, links, and input shared. So I think we all need to kind of uh, reflect a little bit on it and go back to it and study it in detail when uh, the presentations will be sent to us in the in the coming days, few coming days. You will all receive it. Then you'll have time to really go, go back to it and uh, dig into the specific areas that are of your interest and uh, see how you can incorporate it in your in your strategies and uh, your planned activities towards the Danish market. Um, everyone is, as, as said many times before, more than welcome to come back to us. Uh, contact Mickey, contact myself, uh, Christina, Peter. Uh, if you have any questions, if there is any way how we can support you towards your steps uh, on the Danish market, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I think there is not much left to say now. Thank you very much for, for joining us, being here with us, and hope to see you all. Bye.